In the previous chapters, we have seen that when we take the set of all the natural numbers, take all the possible subsets of it and pack them into a new set, we get a set strictly bigger than the set of all the natural numbers itself. The set of all the natural numbers is denoted by the lowercase Greek letter omega. Taking the sets of all the possible subsets is denoted by the calligraphic letter P, which is short for power set. So P of omega is bigger than omega. Let's try to construct the set as large as possible. We have also shown that the power set is a universal tool for making sets bigger. So P of P of omega is even bigger than P of omega and P of P of P of omega is even bigger. For any natural number n, we can construct a set created by n iterated applications of P. We can apply it 17 times or even goggle times. But is it the best we can achieve? Of course not, we have infinity. We can take all these sets, omega, p omega, p p omega, and so on at once, and take their union. We can write this formally like this, the union of all the power sets applied i times to omega, where i goes through all the natural numbers. In short, we will denote the union as u, and it is a set strictly bigger than all of the previous ones. But we are not finished yet. We can again take the power set, and again, and again, and so on, and again the union. The process happening here is called transfinite recursion, and it is one of the key concepts of set theory. An ordinary recursion lives on natural numbers. We define the thing we start with, in our case omega, it is called the base case, and then we define the recursive step, it is in our case taking the power set of the previous set. But transfinite recursion can do more. It can also combine the data collected in previous steps, even if there is no immediately preceding step. So there are two types of recursive steps. The usual one is called the successor step, and the one applied if there is no previous value is called the limit step. So in our case, the successor step is taking the power set, and the limit step is the union of all previous values. But the key question here is, what is the thing that transfinite recursion lives on? The usual recursion is simple, it lives on natural numbers. But what about the transfinite one? In fact, this question is quite tricky. On one hand, whenever we begin to see a pattern in the transfinite recursion, we can take the limit step and overcome it. On the other hand, transfinite recursion doesn't work on everything, it fails for example on positive real numbers. So in this chapter and several following ones, we will focus on the mysterious world of transfinite recursion. A better understanding of what we can afford here will help us to produce the super large sets which we wanted at first, but we will find it interesting and useful also in other ways. Let's see why we cannot proceed by transfinite recursion on positive reals. At first, we need to start with the base case somewhere. But for any positive real number, no matter how small, we can find a smaller one. That is, we need a minimal element in the set. This is not an issue yet, we can fix it by adding zero and taking positive reals with zero. So we can assign omega to the point zero on the real axis now. But what next? If we take any other real number for p of omega, we inevitably skip an infinite, even uncountable amount of real numbers between zero and our chosen number. That is a problem. Not just that the set itself has to contain a minimal element, but even every element has to have a successor in it. This assures us that we can run the successor step every time. But what about the limit step? Take the following example. One infinite increasing sequence and a two-sided infinite sequence behind it. The set contains its first element, so we can assign omega. Every element here has a successor, so we can run successor steps and get p omega, p p omega and so on. But what next? Now we should run the limit step, but there is no next bar that can be assigned to it. Again, whenever we assign the union to a bar here, we skip infinitely many previous elements. So it doesn't suffice that every element has a successor. We need to have a successor of any initial segment. Whenever we take a set of elements with assigned values from the beginning, there has to be the next element. This condition actually covers the previous ones. We can get the successor of any element by finding the successor of the corresponding initial segment. 
Even the empty set can be considered as an empty initial segment, so the successor of the empty initial segment is the first element of the set, so the base case is covered as well. Unfortunately, there is a little issue. No set can meet the required condition. The entire set can be always considered as its own initial segment, and the set cannot contain its successor as all its elements are already in the initial segment. So let's simplify the problem and accept such a set that transfinite recursion can run through all of its elements, even though the set doesn't need to cover the complete world of the transfinite recursion. In this simplification, the last element, if there is one, doesn't have to have a successor anymore. The transfinite recursion simply stops on it. So we require the successors just from such initial segments that do not cover everything. They are called the proper initial segments. Any set satisfying such a condition is called a well-ordered set. These are the sets that transfinite recursion can run over. So if we want to construct a large set by the transfinite recursion, it suffices to find a well-ordered set long enough. In the rest of the chapter, we will look at alternative views of the condition of well-ordering. At first, instead of looking at proper initial segments, it may be useful to look at their complements. There is no official name for the opposite of initial segments, but we will call them terminal segments in this series. From this point of view, a proper initial segment corresponds to a non-empty terminal segment. A successor of an initial segment corresponds to the first element of appropriate terminal segment. So a set is well ordered if and only if all the non-empty terminal segments have their first elements. Another interesting point of view is to ask what constrains a set from being well ordered. In fact, the only obstacle is an infinite decreasing sequence. Indeed, whenever there is an infinite decreasing sequence, it divides the set into a proper initial segment and a non-empty terminal segment without the first element covered by the sequence. There cannot be the first element in the terminal segment because the sequence goes backward and backward. And conversely, any non-empty terminal segment without the first element contains enough space for an infinite decreasing sequence. The absence of a first element ensures that we cannot get stuck in building the sequence. So we have several ways how to determine whether a set is well ordered, that is, we can run the transfinite recursion on it. One way is to investigate all the proper initial segments and check whether they have their successors. It is the same as investigating all the non-empty terminal segments and checking whether all of them have their first elements. And a third option how to check that the set is well ordered is to ensure that there is no infinite decreasing sequence in it. But if you look up the definition of well-ordering by yourself, you will probably find the following one. Not just every non-empty terminal segment, but every possible non-empty subset has its first element. So you can think about why the meaning is still the same. It is not so difficult. Next time we will meet ordinal numbers and we will learn how to index elements of a well-ordered set using other well-ordered sets. See you then!